So yeah, you tell me what are the claims, what are the main points, you know, that are being made, and then evidence is what do they use to make those points, because that's the kind of thing you want to be doing, too, in your writing, so you want to look for it in other people's writing, but also so that you can understand their writing. <laughs> yeah, what's the claim, what would you say? Little girls are what? Okay, yeah, pretty early. What are some of the evidences? Um, in movies, like especially Disney ones, how princesses aren't really, like, they're kind of like seen like, where they can't really run or jump. Or whatnot. They kind of have to look good and wait for their first turn. Yeah, remember, you don't have to agree with the readings. You have three options. Does that really make sense? Do you really see that in Disney movies? Mulan. Yeah, what about Mulan? So you already see some complications with that. There's Mulan, who else? Yeah, Frozen, Moana, you don't need another girl's name. Uh, Elsa. Tangled? Yeah, yeah, no, did the guy do anything in that movie? No. Uh, brave, did anyone say Brave? Oh, Brave. Yeah. I never... Oh, that's not Disney? See, I don't even know. They, they all just look the same to me. She is Disney. Disney probably bought them. They buy everything. You know, I don't know how that's legal, that they can just buy everything out. They own one-sixth of our media, too. That's why you never hear anything bad about Disney in the media, because they own it. Because they'd be like, why are you... T you're fired. You're fired. Yeah. <laughs> throw the bias out the window. Or, no. Hold on to the bias. Throw the objectiveness out the window. Yeah? yeah. Unless it's just about other people that make them look bad. So, you do see it in some Disney. Yeah. What Disney? There we go, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, Snow White, any others? Aladdin, see, think, uh, it's different, right? Uh, she's rebellious, but she gets in trouble for being rebellious. Should've listened to your dad, you know? The whole thing is she needs a man to help her, and a genie, right? Uh, same thing with Ariel, Little Mermaid. So what's the difference between those two categories we almost have here? The protagonist is still the woman right, because they're expecting little girls to want to watch this stuff, but then they give them this this idea that they need men or they have to fight against, I don't know, when did we start making those movies? So you said Milan, that was probably one of the first ones. Yeah, so there's actually like a, all the older ones fall into the social construct of women are helpless, damsel in distress, men have to do everything for women, and women have no agency right? And then we have all the newer stuff that the women are more empowered, they've got a bow, they've got hair, they can yeah. do things, whatever. Um, why do you think that is? Yeah, you think Disney's the one calling all the shots on that? I mean, on the media maybe, but like when you, when we're talking about like social standards and stuff like that, like they're just following suit. They were just going with whatever the social norm was. And then now, What's popular? Yeah, empowering women. Why would they keep making their movies the same other way? It's not that Disney's a good guy now, it's that they're just doing whatever makes them the money. So don't think Disney's all awesome or something and they're, they're leading the charge, or whatever. That's Beyonce. So are her claims that Disney's the source of all the problems? I mean, it sounds like it in the title, right? The Disney princess effect. You guys all, when I mentioned Ariel, you knew which movie that was, right? You guys all saw, even the guys in the room, you guys all saw the Disney princess movies growing up, didn't you? If you had, no, you didn't have a sister or some friend, no? Okay, well. Is it sad though? I don't know. I think I could have survived without seeing that stuff, but I had a stepsister and she made me watch this stuff like on repeat. You're seeing this stuff generally. All the older stuff too, they're classics. So that's probably what happened. The little girl sees that and then subject, object, model, right? The model is in the movie and so she starts doing what the model does and it just so happens to be one of those princesses. And so she starts there, but that's like the gateway drug, right? That's, that's pot. So it goes there probably around like middle school, I'd wanna say, but I, I knew girls who started stuffing their bras in like fifth grade, it was weird. What? Little baby. Yeah, right? 
like having a bra in fifth grade is probably weird unless you're starting puberty already and then let's just move on um <laughs> oh yeah some other examples of stuff i mean this is still disney right hannah montana mm -hmm. high school musical like kids are still watching that stuff even though they're in elementary and middle school um and what kind of stuff happens in those movies they always want to replicate it so she points to things that she thinks are evidence, but what are some clear evidences that she points out? The statistics. Yeah, what are those? Anything alarming? There we go. Yeah, already having body issues from three to six years old? Are you freaking kidding me? A child that old, should they even be like aware of what their body looks like at all? No. No. My mom ran around without a shirt in her neighborhood till she was like 10. And then the other moms were like, your daughter needs to put on a shirt. But she was running around playing with the other boys, you know, and they all had their shirts off while, you know, roughhousing or like playing football or whatever. And my mom just played with them. And so, cause you know, all the dolls were dumb to her. But it, was, it wasn't until she was like 10 until, and I know that's like way back in the day, but I mean, think about it. Like, do you, as a kid, why would you even start thinking about what you look like until you start thinking about the opposite sex and wanting to attract someone or something like that? I don't know. You got to think like, seeing your body as sexual. yeah, seeing your body as something that someone else would want mm -hmm. is probably when that starts happening. The thong underwear to 7 to 12. Yeah. Did you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah, these are all, remember, these are old numbers. If anything, these numbers have gone way up. Unless it's for people who are very petite, like adults, why would there even be thongs for seven to 12 year olds? Why would that even be a category? And I don't know if that is, have you guys like looked in the sections of, I don't go into the women's underwear section and just like check the age ranges and stuff, but like, is that real? I mean, because let's be real, the girl doesn't want their panty line to be like showing through their, you know, skirt, you know, the seven to 14 year old girl, right? Seven years old. That's pretty, that's pretty alarming. Like, why would you even start thinking about your panty line or anything like that? Is that, do you get, am I saying weird stuff or is this like, okay. All right, because you guys are got to work with me here. This is supposed to be the conversation thing. What are some other evidences or claims that are made? Because it, it develops, right? The whole pink thing. Like, girls only have, like, pink stuff. Well, guys have a whole bunch of pink. Yeah, that's weird, right? I even remember orange, bright orange being my favorite because of Michelangelo, the Ninja Turtle. And then after a while, I started looking at it as, like, a flamboyant color. And so I wanted to go with like more tough looking colors, but where did I get my ideas of what colors are tough and not? That is like the most ridiculous thing ever. Like, <laughs> why, how? It's just light bouncing off your eyes. It is, it is just, just light bouncing off your eyes. I mean, rock climbing is pretty tough. And if you see any rock climbing gear, it is bright. so bright and ridiculous colored. Like all these like technicolor random neon stuff, probably so you, people can see you. Yeah, it's safety stuff. Yeah, what else? So. Girls wearing makeup like at 16. It's always those toy makeups. Yeah, you don't talk about like the toy makeups you get. Not like real makeup. You gotta start them off. Yeah, and then you get them to do it on their dolls, right? And the and the Barbie has the makeup. You just wipe the water across or something, and then they get their eyeshadow on. All the practice stuff, rearing them up into this. It starts developing when they get into like middle school or when sports start. You were pointing that out, right? Yeah, that they quit their sports because they think it doesn't look good. Yeah. Did anyone do that at all? Did anyone quit sports because it didn't look good? Like I quit Boy Scouts in sixth grade because my friend said that was for losers. Cause this is the weird thing. You have elementary school and at lunchtime, on the breaks beforehand, you have recess and you can play. And there's like four square, which I was the best at. I ruined all my pants that way. Um, just like huge bloody holes in my legs every, every day. Um, but it was so fun, right? And that's like all I cared about, right? Was to go and play Foursquare or handball or whatever. And then middle school comes around and they take it away. 
and society begins. What happened? Clicks started forming. It wasn't just the people that you play with anymore. Then there was like drama. There's like people like these people. My school, my middle school, it was like three different schools coming together at the same time. So then there's their posse, our posse, and then there's beef because like that guy started dating a girl from our school and she was our territory. And then we start trying to, she was like the hottest girl from our school. What are we, we better fight him over it. Yeah, see, do you see this? But you're in sixth grade, so you're not, really understanding you're pretty much just wild beasts at this point right um and you're learning how to do society but it's like ugly and and mean the coolest girl from my elementary school she was three days late coming into our middle school like she she was this cool okay her mom was a photographer for like wildlife she had the best whale shots like she'd go up to alaska be there for like months and take like all these amazing pictures of like blue whales and stuff that like no one had you know and so she was like famous for that and she would go with her mom and like she'd do all these cool things so not only was she like you know the cutest girl we thought but she had all these stories and she was like really interesting and down to earth you know fifth grader right but then she got into middle like she was three days late because she was on one of those trips and and the girl who would start patting her bra um in fifth grade who was like her best friend just did this smear campaign and destroyed her and by the time she got there she all of a sudden had like no reputation and that girl became the coolest girl and she started dating the guy that that other girl was dating in fifth grade which was weird even in fifth grade to start dating people but i mean like do you see this like immediately do you guys don't have any stories like this you guys didn't quit doing stuff as kids all of a sudden you're like i don't like my stuffed animals i'm gonna put the, hide these in the closet now or i'm gonna do sold them you're like hustling <laughs> what's up bro five bucks okay middle school high school i mean you played sports for a bit and then you yeah. stopped in high school then maybe no. okay no. well there are those who played sports the whole time and then there's those who like kind of i mean guys will definitely do that but then what about girls like girls i mean unless you're playing a sport like volleyball. like volleyball yeah so you guys aren't really feeling that part then? You don't see that as being a possibility? I see that. I, like I, I, see I know that. a whole bunch of them that stop playing sports. Okay, so you, your friend. Yeah. Your friend. I said you can always refer to your friend, right? But what's her solution? That parents parent their kids. Yeah. It's not necessarily that they don't watch this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just that you be there to talk to them about it to help them interpret it and understand it and reason about it so like it depends right either you completely shelter your kids from it and don't let them ever see it and then one day when they do see it they're like rage out like the hulk and then just like devour everything they can see yeah or you walk them through it while they're growing up um or you just let them do whatever and be a dad that like lets your kid watch porn or like actually gives it to them or something like that. So we go there too. All right. Um, so if there's anything else that was in this reading where they talk about stuff, remember like what are the arguments here? Because uh, I've had some students who just said, yeah, she's pointing to Disney as the, like the sole problem of everything, and it's like, well, she she tries to rope you in with Disney and and talk about it a little bit, but she. She's not that flat with her argument. So it's gotten way worse than this, yeah? What are some of the ways? Just the advertising to like young adults. The makeup and the clothes that are made for little girls. Just way earlier than they should probably be thinking about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's in our nature. Like you guys, you wanted to grow up as fast as possible, didn't you? Because being grown up means what? Freedom, right? At least for me, I'm like, I want a car. I want, I want to be an adult already. Like I wanted to be an adult so bad. Like kids shaving their faces when they didn't need to shave their faces. And you're like, I heard it's gonna make my facial hair grow faster or something like that, <laughs> you know, all the kinds of things. Probably start working out before you need to or whatever, Let's stunt your growth. Let's look at a little bit for the, at least for the girls here. So we talked about music. You guys even wrote some essays on some music. 
Has, has anyone ever heard this song? A billion and a quarter views. Where have you heard that song? Radio. Radio, sports event, in a commercial. Popular songs like this get everywhere. In fact, so you've heard this, a lot of views. Did you hear the lyrics already? Let's read a little bit together here. So you're gonna help me interpret these, yeah? yeah? All right. She got a body like an hourglass, but I can give it to you all the time. She got a booty like a Cadillac, but I can send you into overdrive. Oh, uh, you've, <laughs> you've been waiting for that step on up, swing your bat. All right, so uh, what's she talking about? Are these all metaphors? What's she saying? Yeah, how is she better than the other girl, though? Because the sex, yes. She will give up the sexes all the time. She's saying that the girl's body is better, which is, once again, a body thing. Like, has nothing to do with if that's truly what that person sees as beautiful or not. But she is saying, yeah, that standard of beauty, she's got that. I don't have it, but I do have something that I'm willing to use and give to you often more often yeah see anybody could be bad to you you need a good girl to blow your mind yeah what does she mean by blow his mind what's she gonna how's she gonna do that tell him facts right did you know that the circumference of the earth is really wider at the equator than it is that it's an oblong sphere <laughs> This is not a metaphor here. So here's the chorus that's repeated over and over too, right? Bang, bang, into the room. I know you want it. Bang, bang, all over you. I'll let you have it. What, what's she gonna let him have? It. it. Wait a minute, let me take you there. Oh, wait a minute till you, oh, hey. Bang, bang, there goes your heart. I know you want it. Back, back, seat of my car, I'll let you have it. Uh, again, she says it twice. She really wants to convey this message that she's gonna let him have it. And she's not necessarily saying what it is. It really depends on what your definition of it is. That was what Clinton said. Like he legit tried to call into question the definition of the word. You don't remember this, but I mean, I was young. Yeah, with Monica Lewinsky. Just lying then on top of it. Yeah, anyway, back to this. Then we got Ariana, and then she says some stuff, and then later we have Nicki Minaj, and we're not gonna read that. Yeah, I know, it is. I mean, this kind of song, it's very catchy, isn't it? So catchy that they use it for tons of stuff. Even to this day, I'll still see it on, on commercials or hear it at sports games. When you were a little girl, talking to the people here who were little girls at one point. Uh, <laughs> like, that was a short phase for me. Um, when you were a little girl, did you ever listen to music in the makeup dance routines? Because this, this seems like one of those songs that a little girl might listen to and hear on the radio, mom not turn it off, and maybe even, you know, get the CD and then, I mean, she seems wholesome. Probably one of those songs. Now when you danced to songs or like made up dances in front of the mirror and stuff like that and did it with your friends and then had your parents come in and have to, you know, watch your dumb dance and stuff like that <laughs> as a kid. How many times do you think you had to listen to that song to like get that routine down? You know, I bet you people do this. I mean, how old do you think you should be to like be listening to this kind of music? Would you let your little sister listen to this? Teenage, but you made dance routines when you were a kid, though, right? Yeah. All right, uh, let's let's see if we can. How old do you think these kids are? Who's gonna let you have it? How old are these kids? They're wearing a lot of makeup, so you mm -hmm. might 
think that they're older than they are, but. Huh? They, they look like eight to me, but yeah, you're right. I mean, whatever, in those numbers. And so you're repeatedly listening to this and making up a dance routine to it and then dancing in front of adults uh, saying, I'll, I don't know, are we not thinking about the kinds of things that we're listening to or, or doing? Like, we just don't think anymore about it? The fact that they're even wearing makeup, like two their dance instructors and their moms are teaching them, like, you need to wear makeup. To there we go. How many people are involved in this process, right? Who buys the makeup? Kids don't go to the store and buy the makeup. They're like, okay, I'll take this. They can barely see over the counter. This is not happening. Parents, the instructors. Yeah, here. Yeah, they're all co-signing it, encouraging it. See it? There it is. They're still the same age. Let you have it. One more. One more. <laughs> I mean, pedophiles don't really need porn, do they? <laughs> to be fair, they're wearing clothes. Yeah, they even have sweatshirts over that. Someone was thinking. And these girls, their dancing is not as bad. But I mean, you know, like who's in the back here listening to the music that these kids are listening to and thinking their kids aren't gonna have this trapped in their heads for eternity. What I listen to at this age, I still remember every lyric. To this day, the lyrics will pop into my head all the time. Rancid songs and ACDC and everything. Like I remember all that stuff. It even formed my aesthetic values of what I like. Does any of this bother you? The fact that these girls get like prizes Watch, she was watching Dance Moms and she was already like, oh, I want to be like them, I want to I be them. Goals. Like, oh, where do they sell those outfits? Yeah. Or, like, really revealing outfits. Yeah, there we go. Whatever you're doing, if you are trying to improve yourself in this way, you have to invest a lot of time in this, right? And that means look at all the time that you're not investing in developing who you are, like, in here. Does that make any sense? So we've got that. It is very real and very scary, and I don't know what the outcome is gonna be, or do we already know? Uh, we might already know. The one thing that keeps going through my mind is, at what point is something empowerment? And at what point does it then also become the opposite? Because empowerment is like, let women dress how they wanna dress. Don't control someone else. Why can men dress how they want and, and express themselves the way they want and why can't women? And you know, if we want equality and equity, what does empowerment look like? And, and when we say someone like Beyonce or Nicki Minaj are empowering or empowering themselves, is that really empowerment? Because if you still have to dress like that and modify your body like that to get the part, and to make the money, and to get the recognition, then is it really empowering? Or is it just under the pretense of empowerment? Like you're still falling into all the stuff that men already wanted you to do. They're like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you money for that. What do you say, mascot? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So, I mean, be thinking about this stuff because you'll see it. This is all going to come back and, and you've probably been thinking about this for a while because your teachers have probably been cramming this down your, your throats for a while and I'm not like the first person to point this stuff out to you. I'm sure you can see this stuff on your own and have seen it, but I did want to point you in the direction of some interesting information. So like, yeah, what about this, the, the other angle? You were surprised by some of this stuff, right? I think about emergency room. Oh, yeah. It said instead of young girls coming in for self harm, they're coming in for like, anal care. Yeah, there we go. See, this is the problem, though. Why does that happen? Where did you learn about sex? It was what, in fifth grade, there was a movie. <laughs> there was a movie, not at school. Was it at school or? Not like there was porn at school. They talked about 
I'm not asking if you had a program for it in school. I'm asking if that was the first time and you're just like, what? This is how that works? The first time you saw the stuff, the parts was not in school. Oh. There was a magazine in there. There you go. Yeah. Anyone ever gone to Las Vegas? Yeah. I only went as a kid. No matter where you looked, like littering the streets, just as garbage on the streets were flyers of call this number if you want. Here's what you get. You know? I feel like I knew about this, but I didn't know like what went like. Oh, I don't well, think I've ever saw like as a kid. I don't think I ever saw like a penis going into the vagina. Okay. It was just like, oh, they're laying in bed together and they're kissing. See, this is the thing. If we yeah. don't have a basis of comparison and we don't have an explicit education on it where someone's like, this is what happens. No, you don't, you don't have a baby just when you get married. You don't have a baby if you kiss a girl or something like that. Like some of the weird, that's what I thought in like preschool. Because like some girl kissed me and then I was like, oh my gosh, we're going to have a baby now. <laughs> I, I, like I think that thought think went through were, my head. Did you think you were pregnant? <laughs> yeah. No, the, the whole idea of pregnancy, I just thought women got big sometimes. Like, I don't think that I, no one ever explained it to me. That's Parents told me it was a star in a belly. Yeah. They picked a star out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All the garbage. Does it matter? Why do, why do we tell kids this stuff like it freaking matters? Like, just tell them the truth. Are they going to be weirded out? They don't have any basis of comparison to be weirded out by. If you don't tell them there's something weird about it. It's because it's a taboo. You don't want to talk to your kid about it. I don't really tell them that. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's funny ones. There's the stork. Never got that one. The stork or the cabbage patch or something. Yeah, my parents want babies to the cabbage patch. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Like, when we come through the cabbage patch, like, you're going to have a new baby sister. Some parents, I, I think they're just screwing with the like, kids at a certain point. Like, mention sex. They're just like, no. Nah. And then just one time they're like, hey, can you have sex with I'm like, yeah. Uh, I'm just like, okay. Tell my kids like that. Yeah. By the time parents <laughs> give the talk to their kids, there's no way that kid hasn't heard everything. But where did they hear it? Yeah, friends, other kids, maybe overhearing siblings, older siblings. Some parents don't even ever give a talk. In my household, my brothers are. They know you already know. They're like in their late twenties, and like you can't even say the word sex because my parents like freak out. Like, okay, I gotta go. I'm gonna go get some groceries or something. They're married. They're adults. They have kids. You think they know what sex is? Yeah, you only have the talk once once you're pregnant or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> oh man, I want to see that. Uh, they should do that on a show where a parent just like starts trying to have the talk with the kid, and the kid's like already like eight months in. So you learned it from friends, siblings magazines or, or things that you found, right? TV shows. Oh yeah, the kind of stuff that they put on like just normal airing times now. And all the innuendos. Yeah. It have to be actual sex, you just be talking about it. Like Very few movies I go to the movie theater for. I went to the movie theater for Deadpool, <laughs> yes. the, the first one. <laughs> and when I was there, I had this entire row of like seven, eight year old kids behind us with the parents the parents are there and i'm looking at the parents like why the hell did you bring your kids but i thought that at the point where they're making jokes about rape see deadpool it's really clever to the point where like they got you laughing about rape and only in that context was it funny because they were trying to outdo each other's stories does anyone remember this mm -hmm. he's like just met the girl and both of them are trying to outdo each other oh well i was born this way and had you know pretty much had a train run on me and just like horrible stuff but they somehow say it in a way that like makes you laugh as an adult understanding the ridiculousness of what they're doing but as a child and it's just, the joke is going over your head, but the information is going in. I see these kids just sitting there absorbing this whole movie that I think is brilliant, but I'm also having it ruined for me because I've got these kids sitting right here and I know that there's no way that their brains are developed enough to understand the content that they're getting here or to be able to do anything good with it. Well, yeah, it, it becomes, when we talked about time, place, manner for censorship, certain TV shows, if it's got nudity or violence, 
It's not supposed to be shown at certain times, but like our standards for that stuff have really gone down to the point where like you can see almost anything. Where do boys find out? Primarily, number one source. Porn, yeah, what did it say? By the age of 16, 65% of boys and girls had seen online pornography and 28% of 11 to 12 year olds had. Do those numbers sound right? I mean, you can find porn without even trying now. Like it is very difficult to not find porn. You could like type something in wrong and it could be a porn site. I mean, especially with all like the tube sites out there. You're like, YouTube Red. Yeah. Red tube. That's one, right? Yeah, that's why they changed it to a Did they? Premium. premium yeah. Oh, is that why they did that? Uh, Damn, that lasted way too long. So YouTube <laughs> Premium is the same thing as YouTube Red? Yeah. That's funny. These I bet are conservative numbers. Like I saw porn way early and I didn't even have the internet yet. I mean, this was like finding someone's dad's VHS tape stash and then we just like steal it. And then what's the dad gonna say? Where'd my porn go? <laughs> right? No, he knows. He knows he shouldn't have freaking had that crap there for his kid to find. And he's definitely not gonna tell his wife. <laughs> yeah, honey. I'm worried about the kids. <laughs> you should be worried about you, man. I think it's like what you said, that like, they all think that this porn is realistic. When, like, adults, we know that. There we go. This was a suspension of disbelief. I think they even say that. And but, that's, that's where I was going with all of that. Yeah. yeah. You get it? Like, your kid doesn't understand that that's not real. You guys all understand that porn is nowhere close to real for <laughs> sex, right? And that, I know this sounds, ugh. okay. I feel like I just have to say this when it comes up, but like, harder is not better. No. <laughs> yeah, we can all understand what I mean by that. <laughs> and to, to prove it to you, girls were going into the hospital for wounds. I mean, if you have ever seen any of just the normal porn, that is out there right now. Just like normal porn. We're not talking about any fetish stuff. It's just like sex, right? Like most of it is is going into the realms that these kids, this is just normal realm, right? Like what is the face that you're looking for on your partner? Is it a look of pain or a look of like, cause if you watch this stuff and if you see and you understand the anatomy of the human body and how there's no way the girl could actually orgasm that way and she's acting like she's doing it. What the hell is happening here? Like porn, it's like, like women who watch porn, it gives them like, <clears throat> I guess like they feel like they need to act like the way a porn stars do in there we go. films. So like when the guy's like going at it and she's mm -hmm. not feeling it, like yeah. she feels the need to fake it because she's like, oh, well, if I don't act like this, then is there something wrong with it? Is there too? something wrong yeah. with me like, because these I'm people not going to orgasm from this? Yeah. yeah. And while guys can pretty much just get off like super easily because <laughs> the part we we'll talk about development later, surprisingly, um, but like the same part that sti is stimulant for the guy is the, is on the outside for the girl almost. So like, do you guys get what I'm saying? Yeah, we're all here. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, just the thing that the guy is, he's just gonna do what he sees in the movie and then the girl's gonna do what she sees because let's be real too, like what porn is made where it's just staring at the guy? Like you're already <laughs> weirded out just thinking about that idea. Can you imagine if all the shots were just showing the guys like vinegar strokes and stuff? No one's ever seen that? Was it the league? It's all directed for the guy, right? And yet yeah. girls, like, what do they have to work with then? They, they have to watch this, uh, other women getting off. And so there's probably different types of porn out there Literary for that porn. stuff. Yeah. Literary yeah. porn? Literally like novels. Yeah, oh yeah, that's, sorry, that's what Fifty Shades of Grey is. You just take that in the bathtub. Yeah. That's what your mom does. Oh! <laughs> Uh, I had to. Gotta keep you awake. Gotta keep you awake. It doesn't matter. They have a Spanish version for sure. That that book has been translated already. All the trashy things. Yeah. No. Oh yeah. Romance novels forever. So it's weird, right? The the way that 
is it that women need that or, or that's the way that they get off or is it that that's all they have to work with uh, right it's yeah. like some fabio cover and then like words this is how they get off could be but who designed all this anyway wasn't it men to begin with so we have no idea at this point i think but it is guys are learning from porn how to have sex and then it's actually women just trying to i'm the amount that women go along with the kind of shit that guys do is pretty disgusting and pathetic. Not for the women, but for us as a, you know, a human race. Yeah. So when people are on the internet, just think about like what people do with their time on the internet. Like we are the height of intelligence on this planet. It's up to us what happens to this planet and we spend most of our time on the internet just looking at porn or playing video games. I think like 30% of all internet traffic is porn. It's that those are very conservative numbers, right? What's scary is these numbers of primary school sexual assault. Okay, did you guys see that? The different sexual assault stuff? Child on child sexual attacks. Okay, so like this is the thing again. You learn from it, but then how do you really act on it? How do you get what you want now? You want that, right? You want to mimic whatever you see. Your objective here not objective thinking, but your objective, the thing that you want to do is find a girl, right? So, I mean, how do we do that? Ever heard of... Uh, ever heard of prank invasion? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, almost 4 million subscribers, and these numbers have probably been slowed down because of people like H3H3. So what he does is he does these, uh... Fake. Yeah, most of them are fake, but what they, they look like they're real to a child, and they're... Uh, ways to get girls to kiss you. It's not really a prank. It's like a How can I deceive a girl into kissing me and it always works for him because for one thing He's only gonna show the times it works and then also they're probably paid. So he's teaching you He's instructing you how to pull chicks. I told you guys pulling chicks is what we said Yeah, we said a lot of things that was probably like the most g-rated version of what we said as kids, because boys are monsters. Um, are you ready for this? What up, invaders? Chris here, all right? So today is Uber edition. Before we get into the video, I wanna let you guys know, you guys have been asking me for years, how do I kiss girls with the secret magic thumb? Here it is, I'm giving it away to you guys totally free. All you gotta do is go to prankinvasion.shop. Let's put in your address, I'm gonna send you out one of these thumbs for free. On your finger with a piece of lead, you get a pencil. The fake thumb has a piece of lead on the end of it. And you get a little pad. You ask a girl, you know what, um, if I can think of the number you're thinking of from one to ten, you know what, one to a hundred, I get to kiss you. If not, uh, I'll give you two hundred bucks. Every girl will agree to that. They think of their number, you look in their eyes, you're like, mm, okay, got it. You pretend you write something down, but you write nothing down. You hand them the pencil, you say, okay, I got your number here. What number should I have written down? And they'll say like 35. And as they say 35, with the piece of lead, you're gonna write 35. We'll ask them a question like, so what's the chance that I would have gotten 35? And they'll be like, mm, one to 100. And then you flip it, you show them 35, they freak the hell out, they'll make out with you. It's the easiest, it's almost. Yeah. Yeah, will they? What if they don't? What if they're like, oh, just kidding, I'm not an idiot. So this is Uber edition, he's got all kinds of editions okay, so of this. I want you to think of any number, or should I have written down here? 72? 72. What's the chance of all the numbers are at 72? One in a hundred, right? Yeah. 72. You gotta kiss me. Come here. Oh, does she? 200 bucks. Oh, wow. That's, that's the kind of kissing that someone who doesn't want to do it or isn't getting paid still. Yep. Yeah, hey, that wasn't part of the deal. It doesn't matter because she's paid. But what a child sees is, damn, that worked. Oh, I'm doing this tomorrow. I'll, huh? No. Okay, this one is actually age, uh, and it's probably because someone put it on blast. Um, because that one straight up shows you, but all the other ones are not. So, 
I mean, we're talking like, can I kiss your girlfriend? <laughs> am I off work? Uh, yes, I am actually. You're off? Okay. This might sound crazy, but I thought you were gorgeous, and I wanted to know if you wanted to play a really quick game for a really quick kiss. A really quick game for a quick kiss. She just like off work. Can't you see my apron coming out of my bag? I'm here at Starbucks. So deep, it's not even funny. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that just terrible. Yeah. Hey, I mean, he. Where do you think he did get her from? Her back is so Why is she arched? <laughs> Yeah, good, all good questions, all <laughs> really good questions. So you get it, I think you get it, okay. Let's see if he does it right. Within like a foot, I get the kiss, you down? All right, you're pretty tall, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say six feet. That's it? She's like six feet, she's bent. There's so much worse than that, there's so much worse. Um, and yeah, he said within a foot, so it's like. What? Uh, five feet. Right. Yeah, I'll guess. Feet. I'll guess how tall. Oh well, it was in a five eight. Still close enough. Yeah. Wow. So like this is just. This is awful. It's awful. Yeah. Mommy edition. Kissing moms in front of their kids. Kissing parents or kissing kids in front of their parents. Like all that. Uh, so unfortunately I don't want to give him that many views. He's already got 18 million on this one. That's a stripper edition. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder who's clicking on this shit. Little kids who are like, oh, they show strippers? I never get to go in with my dad. No. It gets worse though, because remember what I said, almost 4 million, he had 3 million last time I checked, so it's still growing again for some reason. When you think of these numbers, understand that that is like, what percent of the people that are on YouTube are subscribed to him? If there's 3.5 to 400 million people in our country, then that means that how many people, I mean, and this is I guess maybe worldwide, but I mean you'd have to speak English to get the full effect here, or do you need to? Because you just like seeing this, right? So kids see this stuff and they, they're like soaking it in, yeah? Some of them, it doesn't even work. And he's like, oh, I'm just gonna kiss you anyway. Like he, he plays rock, paper, scissors for a quick game for a quick kiss, that's what he says. And he plays rock, paper, scissors. And if he wins, then he gets to kiss her. And if he loses, he ends up trying to kiss her anyway. And then she goes along with it. And so then, Kids are getting the idea that like they can just do whatever they want here, and huh? Rapey. It's very rapey. Even manipulation is rapey, right? The same way of well, I mean, once I drugged her, she was ready to go, so that's not really rape anymore, right? Because she said yes, or she just didn't say anything. Have any of these videos been like flagged? They should all be flagged. This guy should be banned from from YouTube and anything and put in prison for because this is education right this is this is how we learn now